All right, so here we go with chapter 8-3, Geometric Sequence and Series. Um, so the whole idea here is that we, before we looked with at arithmetic series um, and sequences, and with those we were looking at a constant rate of change. Um, with this, it's going to be a bit different. So um, with those, we were adding a constant amount. Um, with these, we're actually going to be multiplying. So, for example, we look at this um, particular sequence here, sequence here, and if we look at the first piece here, we have that th we have three, three going to six. Well, that's adding three, but then we add six on the next one. So we realize that we're not actually going to be able to. Um, describe this with an addition relationship, this one's actually going to have a multiplicative relationship. And um, hopefully you've gotten that we're just going to be multiplying each term by two to get to the next term. Okay. Now that that um, kind of gets to um, this next part. In the previous one we had a D and that was equal to the common um, difference okay, between the terms. Um, with this one, we're actually going to have R, and that refers to the common ratio between the two. Um, and with this one, we're, or with this particular sequence, it's fairly easy to see that it's just times two, but that's not always going to be the case, so we're going to want to use this formula. Now, this formula just says that we take the, the second term, okay, and we divide it by its previous term. So A sub n minus A sub n, or sorry, divided by A sub n minus one, um, which gets us to two. Okay. So now we find the common ratio now um, of something like this. And again, this is one of those scenarios where we wouldn't actually be able to find it, um, save for the fact that we have this formula that kind of allows us to find it for all of these. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take the first term here and divide it okay, by the term previous to it. And um, again, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal to get that, and we end up with a negative one half. Okay? And that negative one half, if we multiply five times negative one half, we get to here. Five over or negative five over two times one half, and we'll get to the next term. So on and so on down the line. Now we might run into a scenario where we're supposed to find r for non-consecutive terms. Now we can still do that. The way we're going to get around that is basically, um, so it's going to actually be very similar to how we did with arithmetic equations. So let's say that um, we they get, only give us a sub 1 and a sub um, 6 here, or I'm sorry, 5 here, okay? And so they didn't tell us any of these terms in the middle. This was the same sequence that we saw on the previous slide. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to take the second term, 48, and divide it by the first term. 3. Okay? So in this, in this case, we take a sub 5 divided by a sub 1. Okay? So if we go ahead and divide those out, then we wind up um, getting 16. Now the next step is going to be to figure out the number of steps between them. Now we learned with arithmetic sequences that we can simply take the number term, so this is the fifth term, and subtract okay, the number term of the original term or the first term. So in this case it would be 5 minus 1, okay, and we're going to use that in this case as a square root. So um, we're actually going to, or not a square root, but a root. So in this case we're going to take that 16 that we found earlier and we're going to take the fourth root of it. And if you do that, you end up with the two that we found in the previous slide as well. But now we found it even though we didn't know all of the terms in the middle. Okay, useful tool. So just like with arithmetic sequences, geometric sequences also have a formula that allows us to find any term in that sequence as long as we know two things. So in this one, we're going to need to make sure that we know the first term. It's a little different than the arithmetic sequences. In that one, we had to find the initial term. This one, we're going to use the first term. Okay, and if it's a geometric sequence, we also need to know R. If we know those two things, we can find any number in the sequence. So for example, if we wanted to find the ninth term in the sequence, that tells us that 
are in, well, we're looking for what our or what the value of a is when we have um, when we get to the ninth term. Okay, they already told us a sub one it's equal to four. They already told us r, so they basically gave us all the information, and we just have to plug it into the equation. So we take that four and plug it in for a sub one. We take the um, one half here, and we're going to go ahead and plug that in for our r. And then in, in this case, is equal to 9. So instead of an in, we're going to write a 9. Then we just go through and we evaluate. Okay, so we get 4 um, times 1 over 256. And that leaves us with a sub 9 is equal to 1 over 64, which is the ninth term in the sequence. Now the next piece would be that if if we're given um, that scenario where we're not given consecutive terms. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and find r. Now to find r with non-consecutive terms, recall what we're going to do is take the um, first term, or I'm sorry, the second term, two thirds, and we're going to divide it by the th first term, negative 18. And then we're going to take the root of it based off of how far apart these two terms are. They are 5 minus 2 terms apart. Therefore, we're going to take the cube root. Okay. So we, again, do some arithmetic. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal, negative 1 over 18. Okay. Take the cube root of that 1 over 27. And you know what? I have too many negatives here. My bad. Okay, um, and we get a negative, I pulled out the negative, it doesn't really matter where it's at in this, so I apologize, could have been a little cleaner, is equal to negative one-third. So now we have R. That's one half of the puzzle. Now the other half of the puzzle is to find A. So, or I'm sorry, A sub 1. Now to find A sub 1, we're going to have to do a little bit of work, but let's just recall that when we're, if we were going from A sub 1 to A sub 2 to A sub 3, a sub 4, what we're going to do is we are going to multiply by r. So just like um, in, in, so just like with uh, the arithmetic sequence, if we want to go in the opposite direction, we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to divide by r. And that's what you're going to see right here. Okay, Is that we have a sub 1. If we want a sub 1, we can just go to the term after it and then divide by our common ratio. So we just take that term, a2, negative 18, and we divide it by our common ratio, and then that gets us to a1. Well, once we have a1, we just have to apply the formula. Okay. So that formula being a sub n is equal to a1 uh, times r to the n minus 1 power, we plug in all of those values. You can go ahead and take a sec to double check, but we have the negative 54 that we found for A1 here. Okay. N is obviously going to be 6, since that's the value, or that's the term that we're looking for. And then our R, of course, is negative 1 third, which is right here. Okay. Okay. And again, the, the arithmetic here is a little challenging, so do be careful. But in the end, you should end up with negative 2 over 9. Okay. So moving on to the next piece, okay, we have the sum of finite geometric sequences. And of course, that is a the series. Okay. So if we're going to find that, we're going to need a formula. And here is that formula. The formula states that if we want to find S sub n, okay, then it's going to equal A sub 1, the initial term, times 1 minus our common ratio to the n power all divided by 1 minus r. Now that's a bit of a mouthful, so let's take a look at an example and see if we can clarify that a little bit. So in this particular example, okay, we can see that we are, um, if we want to find our initial term, well, that's going to be when n is equal to 1. So we're just going to plug that in first. We plug it into the equation here and get 16 times 1 half raised to the one power since we just have the one in right there. Go ahead and multiply all of that out and we end up getting eight. 
Now the other pieces of information that we're obviously going to need here, we need a sub 1 and then we're going to need r. Well the nice thing about an equation like this is that r is actually basically given to us in, in this equation because we, ought, we already have um, that our common ratio, well we're going to be multiplying by 1 half raised to a power. Okay. So in this case r is simply 1 half. Okay. Now, to find in, and this part might be a little confusing, and I can certainly work to clarify it in class, okay? Um, the number of terms here is just going to be 6, and actually we went over in this class now that I think of it, 6 minus 1 plus 1, because we want to count that 1. So, again, if you're trying to find the number that you go, or the distance between, one, or, or how many terms, if we go from 1 to 6, we would subtract and take the difference and then add back in the 1. So we get a 6 there, and then we just plug all of that into the formula. Okay. Now I'm not going to go through this in the interest of time, but if you compare the values okay, that we found right here to the values that you see up here, then you will see that all we're doing at this point is substituting. Okay. And I said that, you know, and I'm going to go right back on it because I love using my highlighter here. We have a sub 1, a sub 1, a sub 1. Okay. We have um, R, R, and R. Oop, forgot about that one. And then lastly, we have our N, which we know in this particular case is going to be 6. Okay, And that's what we plug in there. Do a little bit of arithmetic once again. Okay, And I know through, I'm going through those a little bit fast. You can always pause and take a look. But this is something you should probably just try on your own so that you can get more comfortable with these somewhat complex calculations. And we wind up with 63 over 4. Okay, The main part is the setup. And then the arithmetic is something we'll just have to work on and get practice on. All right, now the sums of infinite geometric sequences, well that actually ends up being a little bit easier. You can notice the equation is actually quite simple. We take the initial term and then we divide by 1 minus our common ratio. So if we look at an example here, and we do have some constraints, r does have to be between negative 1 and 1, okay, and r is less or is not equal to 0. And let's, and, and, and in class I'd like to actually clarify why r has to be between negative 1 and 1. And we can kind of think about why that might be the case. Now, if we want to find the sum of this, this situation, okay, we're going to have to first off figure out what a sub 1 is. Well, that's easy. We're just going to go ahead and plug in a sub 1 into our equation. So we just replace in with 1 we find that it's in fact equal to 8. Okay. Now the only other piece we need is 1 half and I'm hoping you're seeing that this is very similar to the one before. Well since it's already in this format we can clearly see that 1 half is going to be what our um, values are going to be changing by each time. That is in fact simply our common ratio. Okay. We plug it into our formula and we wind up with 8 times 2, or just 16. Now, if you want to try on your own, and it's actually kind of cool, if you were to actually plug in the values, find A1, which we found, and then you found A2, and then added A3, and added A4, okay, and then kept going for a while, what you would actually wind up finding is that these values are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, and eventually they basically won't matter and you will be approaching 16. So then in theory, if we were to continue on to infinity, we would finally hit it. Hope the video helped. I will um, be seeing you shortly. Please do write, there, write down any questions you might have so we can clarify them in class.